Hello, welcome back again. I'm still Ray Tones from New Zealand. Our next speaker is Pavel Kalinda. He's going to speak about solar cycles, geology, and climate. Uh, Pavel lives in Klajmo, Czech Republic. He's a doctor of natural sciences, geophysics, and uh, uh, seismologist and forensic expert. Kalinda's main research area is seismology with a special focus on earthquake prediction. Over to you now, uh, Pavel. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation, me, uh, and introduction of my of my lecture. I will share share my screen. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my presentation. I'm I'm very very happy that I can uh, show you my presentation about uh, about uh, the relationship between start between uh, um, planetary heat, uh, solar activity, and uh, climate changes. Uh, so um, I will uh, deal with cycles uh, from a billion years long up to up to 60, 62 and a half years long, which are the, the shortest uh, climate uh, uh, cycle, so, um, cycles. And in the sixth, sixth uh, part of my presentation, I will show you the model of the um, which can explain the delay between solar activity and uh, climate changes. Uh, this model um, deals with uh, accumulation of the energy, solar energy in the continental rocks. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, the diagram of uh, Raskazov, uh, 2019, uh, about um, large uh, magma, uh, mental magma outflows uh, during the whole history history of the earth uh, magma outflow were observed uh, 4000 billion years ago 4000 uh, four and a half thousand two and a half thousand and uh, very large uh, outflow was uh, practically two two billion years ago and we uh, observed and we recognized uh, very large uh, impact craters like crater bohemia Bredefort uh, in South Africa, Sudbury in North America. Uh, the last uh, large um, magma outflow, globally, practically globally on the Earth, were practically 660 uh, years ago, when started the Phanerozoic. Uh, during the Phanerozoic era, we have uh, the first uh, data, proxy data, about uh, climate changes. Uh, based on uh, isotopes um, like uh, beryllium 10, uh, carbon 14, or oxygen oxygen 18. Um, um, here is the, the graph or diagram about uh, concentration or proxy concentration, relative concentration of CO2 during the Phanerozoic uh, era. In uh, Ordovician, Ordovician uh, the concentration of CO2 was uh, almost 20 times higher than uh, recently, which is this dashed line. And um, in Ordovician and Silurian, um, the first uh, plants land out uh, to, from ocean to the dry land. And uh, the Decre the concentration of CO2 decreased uh, below uh, recent, recent level in uh, carbon ferrous and uh, at the beginning of Permian time. Uh, in, the Mesozoic, in the Mesozoic, the concentration of uh, CO2 was four up to uh, five times higher than uh, recent level. And uh, we can compare uh, the concentrations and the de development of the climate uh, on the Earth. Uh, in the second window here, there is extension of the continental icebergs during the Carboniferous and uh, early Permian time. Uh, the 
icebergs uh, reach up to 30 parallels and uh, in the uh, in the quarter quarter now the extension of the of the icebergs was almost the same as uh, in carbon ferrous it means that the climate uh, is going to very very rapidly to the same position like uh, in carbon ferrous where are the the carbon um, dioxide um, from atmosphere is very very well known it is uh, in uh, limestones and uh, carbon ferrous coal and we can see that during the Phanerozoic time the temperature decreased by uh, almost five five degrees uh, degrees <clears throat> And uh, what happened uh, during uh, Phanerozoic? The solar system, the sun the solar system, uh, orbited twice uh, around the galactic center, according to Barenbaum 2002. Here is the concentration of CO2. And we can see that the uh, galactic longitude um, during the uh, Devon carbon period or border and uh, between carbon and uh, uh, chloride uh, um, um, key KT boundary was uh, practically almost the same. And we know that um, at the KT boundary was a large impact in the Chichik group. And we can speculate that the same impact was uh, at the DC boundary. Does climate depend on the changes of solar activity or on impacts or on plant uh, development? It is a very important question. We can, we, we can see two periods of solar system around the data center and two periods of carbon dioxide um, uh, relative. Here is a result of the Professor Kroll James Kroll from London uh, study about in the Grand Canyon, and he studied the uh, the um, sequence of the erosion and uh, and sedimentation on the on the canyon and date them the this uh, border and date uh, well, made uh, analyze the proxy data. Here is uh, the result of his study. We know that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> In Cal Caledonian um, orogeny, uh, Caledonian orogeny coincides with uh, pulses in ice uh, house climate, the same for Hercynian and uh, other orogeny periods. In the second uh, part of this graph, there is uh, solar activity, which has four periods during such a uh, Phanerozoic time, according to Weiser. And the temperature followed the, the solar activity. And the result of, a, of a Professor Cross study is here. Pulses of erosion coincide with the cold climate periods with the pulses of orogeny. And the pulses of deposition coincide with warm climate uh, periods. Uh, when we uh, we will look uh, only for for the last five million years since Adam, uh, we can uh, we can see what uh, happened in climate in, on the Earth. Here is graphs according to Zachos and Lisetsky and Raymo, and we can see that the temperature dropped during the last uh, three and a half million years up to almost six degrees down. Um, in the period between one million years and three million years, there were there were observed uh, glacial cycles uh, with the period of uh, approximately forty thousand years, and the last one million years uh, dominate uh, uh, cycles with one hundred thousand years. What uh, the these uh, periods are not random. Uh, this, the periods follows the orbit parameters of the Earth. And uh, this uh, long period, uh, 100, almost 100 uh, uh, kilo year cycle is, is follows the eccentricity of the, of the Earth. 
and the um, 40 kilohertz cycle follows the obliquity of the Earth's axis. Uh, so uh, Milankovic explained uh, this uh, this um, changes between uh, ice ice age and uh, inter inter ice age by the solar uh, forcing. Uh, here are uh, all of the cycles in uh, of Earth's orbit: precision, obliquity, eccentricity, and solar forcing for the uh, northern hemisphere for the 65 uh, latitude. And we can see that uh, when the solar forcing was maximal, that was switching uh, between ice ages and the hot uh, warm climate in any case. Uh, Ganopolsky uh, tell us on the last conference in Vienna that the parameters of uh, uh, Earth orbit, orbit uh, are similar to, to the next uh, glacial, glacial uh, cycle start. So, uh, shorter planetary cycles than Milankovic. Um, from the satellite measurement, uh, we, we can find the direct, directly the parameter like uh, total solar irradiance. And uh, uh, and the satellites like Nimbus, Soho, and other show that the variation of the solar activity or variation of the total solar irradiance uh, varies with the amplitude of uh, almost two two watts per square meter. And when we tie all of uh, measurements in the one one uh, sequence, we can see that the um, solar irradiance decreases decreased during the last 30, 30 years. We have no, not only the, the direct measurements, we have uh, proxy measurements by beryllium 10, according to the skin. And this uh, red curve is a measurement in Ar Antarctic. Uh, the green, line, green is a measurement in Greenland, and the black line is uh, solar activity according to um, uh, group solar numbers. And we can see uh, that um, the, the solar activity varies um, with, the, with, some, with some decreasing and the temperature, which is uh, here with uh, thick, uh, thin, uh, thin uh, blue line, uh, follows this, uh, this variations of the, of, the temp of the solar activity. And we can see that in minima of solar activity, uh, we can see uh, wolf minima in climate, uh, spurter minimum, uh, mountain minimum, data minimum. And uh, now the maximum of uh, uh, temperature, global temperature, follows the maximal uh, solar activity during the last 1,000 years, uh, according to beryllium 10 isotope, which is not, uh, not measured. This is proxy, proxy temperature. Uh, we can uh, model this uh, solar activity by a planetary bead. Um, we found, we uh, used uh, only four giant planets and uh, this uh, graph or curve um, follows the bead of uh, these four uh, planets and consists from three main uh, components. The first component is uh, Jupiter-Saturn component uh, of almost 60 years long. Uh, it is uh, practically one third of a uh, Jose cycle when all planets are um, in the same position each to each other. The second, uh, second component is uh, one half of conjunction of uh, Uran-Neptune. It is uh, 85.7 years. And fourth component is a uh, cycle with the peri period of 1025 years, according to Timo Niroma. And uh, according to our research, uh, this uh, cycle um, shifts uh, of 20 up to 40 years, each uh, 1000 years, uh, which uh, results from the beat between uh, planet nine and uh, the whole giant uh, planets. Uh, whole solar system. 
Uh, planet Nine has a period of approximately 18,000 years and is in the distance of 700 astronomical units. And the extremes of climate correspond uh, to this equation. Five amplitudes of uh, beat between Jupiter Saturn, three amplitudes of beat between Uran Neptune, and two periods, two amplitudes of beat uh, between uh, with, uh, one with the, the cycle of uh, 1000 years, and the maxima are every um, 1000 year. Here, well, here was the Roman climate optimum, here was medieval uh, climate optimum, and here is now anthropogenic. Uh, warming optimum, warming period, and uh, the black black uh, arrows mark uh, the cold cold periods between between maxima, like um, like Greek uh, Homer and uh, Wolf Sperrer Mounder Dalton minima. <clears throat> uh, we can model this uh, solar activity not only by uh, giant planets, but uh, uh, tidal planets, according to Salvador, he calculated according to his model, beat between uh, Venus, Earth, and Jupiter, and the red curve is uh, his uh, output from his model, and uh, the blue curve is a directly measure measurement uh, first derivative of uh, of uh, total solar irradiance or proxy total solar irradiance uh, according to Steinhilberg. And we can see perfect match of, uh, of minima of model and uh, total solar irradiance perfectly match with the climate uh, cold periods, like dark ages, little ice age. And maxima, the last maximum of the, of the anthropogenic global warming, Coincide with perfect uh, with the maximum maximum of the uh, first derivative of total solar irradiance, the biggest during the, the last two thousand years. Two thousand years. Maxima of uh, temperature coincide with the periods without uh, without this uh, drop, without this minima in uh, total solar irradiance, as well as the recent uh, global warming. The same, uh, the same result um, is um, according to um, patterns of uh, uh, of solar inertial motion, according to Jose and uh, Ivanka Harvatova, and uh, she found that uh, during uh, organized organized uh, trifoils period of uh, solar inertial motion, there are warmer uh, periods in, in climate. Uh, this this uh, trifoil periods uh, are 60, 60 years long. And opposite uh, the chaotic uh, periods of uh, solar inertia motion coincide with colder periods like Wolf, Sperrer, and Maunder, and uh, Dalton, Minima. And shorter, even shorter planetary cycles uh, which follow the, the solar. The, the, Beat between planets. Here is the, the uh, proxy solar activity according to Solanke uh, based on uh, isotope beryllium 10. And I was wondering when uh, the sequence of uh, this solar activity repeats again, repeats again. I made the autocorrelation function with the step of one Jose cycle. And I was uh, wondering when this sequence repeats. Repeats again. Here is the result. Um, the sequence uh, repeats again approximately 6,261 uh, years uh, later. And uh, we, can, we can see uh, the position of planets uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the distance of this, of this, of this uh, time. Here is the very, very interesting position of uh, pattern of the planets uh, on uh, July the 1st, uh, 4,135 years uh, before Christ. And we can see that all planets are on one straight line except uh, Neptune. Uh, 
practically 6,250 uh, six and a half years later, the position is uh, perfect, uh, almost the same, except the rotation of uh, 60 degrees. This period, 6,256 and a half years, uh, is called the uh, Xapos Berg period. We can compare the, the position of uh, both uh, patterns and we can see that it perfectly match uh, position uh, like mirror um, in this, in this uh, period. Uh, so we can uh, see what uh, happened uh, with the climate on the Earth practically two Berg or Xapos periods ago. Uh, at the time, there was end of the last uh, ice age, warm, warm ice age. Uh, one period ago, one Xapos period ago, uh, there were established the first state like Mesopotamia, Egypt. And now we can observe anthropogenic, anthropogenic uh, global warming. <coughs> uh, uh, this, this period, the Xapos period, will finish uh, at 2,121. So um, after that, that time, I suppose the end of the uh, warming era and the start new glacial uh, ice age, new ice age. Uh, even shorter planetary cycles, um, like um, 934 years up to one ten, uh, one thousand years are very, uh, very well seen in the climate. Climate uh, two two thousand years ago was uh, Roman optimum. Uh, one thousand years ago was medieval uh, warm period, and now we can see uh, recent global warming. And what is the <clears throat> common the common period of the whole? Uh, entire uh, solar system. Uh, I found, you know, we found the common period uh, 4,171 years, which is uh, exactly two thirds of uh, Xapos uh, period. We can see uh, the beat between uh, Jupiter and the whole, whole Earth. 20, 20 such periods uh, are here. 10, period, 10 beat periods between uh, Saturn and Jose cycle are here. The one period of the beat between Uranus and Jose uh, means the uh, whole, whole planets are here. And uh, two periods between Neptune and Jose are here. Uh, so it is well, very uh, well seen that uh, the rest of the, of the beat periods and between uh, and the, the common bit periods are in the in the ratio like small integers. So it is seen that uh, after some couple of um, periods, the sequence will repeat again. Uh, short planetary bit cycles like hashtag uh, cycle, two thousand three hundred two years, and uh, one third, third or one fourth of, of it. Uh, follows the Laplace resonance, uh, resonance, uh, resonance um, um, equation. Uh, one uh, Jupiter minus three Saturn, one Uranus, and one Neptune uh, is a like Laplace resonance when uh, the energy transfer outside the system is uh, minimal. Short uh, planetary beat cycles. Um, are periods between between 60 and 63 years, and here is the big period between uh, Jupiter, Jupiter um, like gravity, uh, Jupiter, uh, Jupiter like tides, and Saturn, and uh, this uh, period follows uh, no, has uh, the, uh, this uh, beat is a period of uh, 61 one years. And uh, this period is very well visible in uh, all of climate uh, parameters like uh, like uh, Pacific Decada oscillation. And we can see uh, the maxima of PBO in 1992 and uh, 1932. 
Uh, the same, the, the uh, similar is uh, directly uh, in solar activity. Here is the number of uh, annual frequency of um, Aurora Borealis according to Ksivsky and Pale. And this um, um, solar activity follows the follows the period, follows the rule and from the, with the period of uh, approximately 60 years. With the maximum uh, minima minima of uh, of uh, our Borealis uh, number in 2019-40. Very uh, very important uh, period in the uh, climate and uh, in the all of geological uh, geological um, uh, parameters on the Earth is uh, 62 and a half years, which is uh, eccentricity of Jup Jupiter. Jupiter. Uh, uh, the thin line is a LOD parameter with the minima in uh, 1865, uh, 1935, and uh, 2000. 2000. And uh, the thick uh, line is uh, the temperature um, uh, that, that detrended uh, temperature. And uh, we can see that uh, the temperature follows uh, the LOD, length of the day, uh, of the rotation of the Earth, uh, by several several uh, years. And uh, we can see that uh, after maxima in 2000, we can suppose the next uh, drop of uh, LOD uh, the, and the drop of uh, temperature will follow with the several years uh, will follow several years later. Uh, the temperature uh, has the uh, impact on the global sea level because uh, of uh, water of water um, expansion. Temporal expansion and the uh, global sea level rise rates uh, has this uh, 62 years long period with the maxima 1810, 1885, 1940, 45, and uh, 2011. Practically, there are the, the years of the maximum of eccentricity of uh, Jupiter. Jupiter. And uh, even in the secondary parameter of climate, like uh, drought uh, Palmer severity index, uh, for the last 120 years in the continental US, follows this uh, rule of uh, 62 uh, and a half years long period. Uh, blue dots are um, mark, uh, mark uh, floods, and the red dot dots uh, mark uh, dry periods and you can see that um, uh, here, here the arrows mark the maximum eccentricity time of uh, Jupiter. And uh, you can see that in 1943 there was maximum of uh, drought in the continental US and the same was 2005. The last uh, flood in 2019 was the first flood of the next uh, uh, pluvial or um, wet period, which started last last year. Uh, this uh, this curve is not uh, for US, but uh, in uh, Central Europe uh, we measured the uh, Punkwa River flow. Punkwa is an um, underground river. Which uh, go, is going through the Moravian Karst, and the minima of the flow was in uh, 1953 and in 2018. And uh, the arrows mark again the maximum of eccentricity of uh, Jupiter. And uh, in the 2020, we observed the first flood in, the, in this river, uh, which uh, it changes the dry dry period to the uh, next pluvial. So um, I have several several minutes uh, for um, our model of uh, accumulation of solar energy in the continental rocks, and uh, I will um, briefly show the results of the 
connect, um, of the um, um, relationship between uh, solar activity and uh, climate. Here is a very, very known uh, um, um, scheme of the distribution of solar energy, incoming solar energy in the atmosphere and uh, in the rocks and uh, oceans. And uh, from, the, from the sun uh, is going uh, 1,362 watt per square meter. 51% is absorbed, absorbed in, the land, in the, the land and oceans. We, um, we found that 4% only uh, absorbed in, in land is uh, able to explain all of uh, seismicity and all of volcanic activity. And uh, we can compare the outgoing um, long wave radiation. Here is outgoing long wave, long wave radiation, which is, which is proportional to the absorbed energy. This uh, all, all uh, are, are, we, can, we can compare with the global temperature. Uh, we used such a simple model. We have uh, two cubes. One cube is on the surface and one cube is uh, at the depth of the edge. And this cube at the depth uh, has uh, accumulated some amount of uh, energy. The new state at the delta T later, uh, this cube will, will release some, some part of energy. And we add some new part from the coming energy from the sun. The function of the uh, temperature or, or um, energy accumulated in this cube is very, very simple. Uh, it's uh, sum of two, two parts, uh, really uh, the rest of, uh, of the release and the uh, new, new additive, additive, additive uh, from the surface. The, the first uh, equation is, is simple too. It is um, uh, normal uh, or average energy and the average temperature in the in the depth, in the depth. and and the uh, law, relative law, uh, relative decay law, with the exponent of a, which is proportional, which is uh, which is um, uh, proportional to the thermal uh, thermal um, conductivity parameter of the, of the rocks. And the second uh, relationship is uh, even much uh, easier. The, from the surface is going to the depth age uh, at, uh, during the time delta T, the same part of the, of the extra energy, which is on the surface. Extra energy, uh, it means, um, relative to, to the normal normal average energy uh, energy or average uh, temperature on the surface, uh, we can we can uh, measure parameter a or uh, derivative parameter like uh, half time of the um, accumulation, which is uh, equal to the half time of the release of the energy from the from the depth, and. Uh, we can choose this parameter. Uh, here is uh, on the axis half life of the of the heat, uh, which is accumulated during uh, during this uh, time. And when we made average of the global temperature according to man, when we smoothed it uh, in the ten time ten uh, years long window, we obtained uh, that the half maximum uh, correlation was for a half life of the accumulation three hundred years. And the and the coefficient of correlation was 0.72. When we used the um, the smoothed the global temperature on the surface in the 50 years long window, we found a much better correlation uh, with the maximum for 270 years and coefficient correlation of uh, 0.87. It is it is very very high correlation. And here is the result. The thick line is a smoothed uh, global temperature according to man on the surface for the last 1,000 years. And this thin line is uh, our um, accumulated energy from coming from the sun 
talk like it directly from, from uh, Wolf's numbers. We can see that correlates uh, very well in minima with each other, and we can uh, we can explain this uh, result of the of the increasing of the temperature on the on the surface, uh, like um, accumulation of the well, like high solar activity during the last uh, two hundred years and accumulation in the continental rocks uh, in the Earth's crust. Uh, we can we can compare with the uh, with the well, sea level too, and we can see uh, again that perfectly match uh, not only the values but uh, but uh, the first derivative uh, too, except uh, these drops, uh, which correlates with the uh, explosion of la large uh, volcanoes like Samalas, Kuve and uh, Tambora. So <clears throat> again, um, we can explain 85% of um, cro uh, climate uh, changes uh, like uh, accumulated solar energy, uh, uh, which uh, came from uh, sun and which was uh, accumulated in the, in the rocks. So uh, when we um, can uh, model the future solar activity. Uh, we can um, model the future climate changes too. This is a model according to Shannon 2011, and uh, we can see uh, that uh, after 2000, uh, he supposed um, the solar activity, uh, he, he supposed decreasing of the solar activity, and uh, Many other models um, um, found the same the same behavior of uh, the sun. We can um, suppose that the scenario will be like this, and we can calculate the future uh, accumulation of the of the solar energy in the continental rocks. And uh, according to our scenarios, uh, we can uh, we can calculate the future climate changes. Uh, this thick line is uh, uh, observed uh, global temperature smoothed in a 50 years long window. And here is uh, our uh, calculated um, global temperature. Uh, we, added, we add we sum um, to our um, accumulated, uh, accumulated um, energy 62 years long uh, um, uh, curve. Which, uh, which is um, um, which originated uh, in uh, Jupiter's eccentricity, according to Scafetta. And we can see that um, after the maximum in 2010, uh, we can see that they really follow the drop, um, they follow the drop uh, with the minima between 2030 and 40. And the next uh, will be next maximum. Um, Practically the same as as uh, now, or a bit a bit um, a bit um, uh, lower. And next will be uh, again the drop of the uh, water temperature, but uh, radical cooling uh, will be after 2121. If uh, volcano, um, if there will be no volcano, this of course uh, volcanic index uh, higher than five. Uh, if yes, uh, they will be um, the drop of temperature sooner than uh, supposed according to accumulated energy. So uh, my conclusions, the Earth's climate is evolving in the same way as the Earth itself and the life are evolving. After the spreading of life to the land in order of Silurian, uh, the concentration of CO2 decreased uh, to the lowest level. CO2 concentrations are now the second, second lowest accompanied by, by ice ages. Milankovitch cycles uh, are a reflection of the parameters of the Earth's orbit, such as spring, summer, autumn, and winter. The arrival of the ice age is now expected uh, at the earliest after 2121. Uh, Periods of plants in solar activity are also recognizable in the climate. Uh, 11 years uh, Schwabe cycle, 22 years Halle cycle, 
60, 60 years, uh, it's Jupiter, Jupiter eccentricity, Gleisberg cycle, 88 years, um, and others with the common period of uh, uh, 4,171 years. The most important is uh, 6,256 years Sapos dark period. Uh, the accumulation of uh, heat in, in the crust uh, integrates and thus delays the climate changes behind the solar activity. The half lives about uh, 270 years, and all cycles are close to their maxima, and the radical decrease in solar activity can be expected. In the case of eruption of uh, volcano with index uh, higher than five, rapid cooling will occur. Uh, so many thanks for your attention. Thanks, Pavel. That was that was very interesting. Uh, um, a lot of that was familiar to me, but um, this whole idea of the um, of the heat content in the geological formations that was new. Well, I was aware that there were that they could measure past temperatures through that, but I wasn't aware of the extent of which they could um, uh, participate in um, the, um, uh, the in those cycles. So that's very interesting. Thanks. And it's interesting to hear your predictions uh, that of what's coming um, in the temperature. Now, have we got any questions there? We haven't. Uh, um, Mark, Mark says there's no questions, but he says exceptional information. Thank you, Pavel. It's from Mark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, so a, a number of those um, periods are familiar to me, but one or two of them are a little bit different, so I'm interested in that. Um, I've got a couple of articles in the CRI blog about um, the isotope measurements going back sort of, um, you know, about 10,000 years uh, and the cycles that are found in those. So um, a number of those ones look like you've got similar sources on that for, for that. So uh, that's something to, to compare notes on. Um, so thank you, thank you for your attention again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what can we ask Pavel about? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, yes, uh, I've got one. Um, so um, you're saying that we're potentially sort of in about a hundred years heading into the next ice age, but uh, that's based on the Milankovitch cycles and the timing of those. Now, when you look at those very long cycles, uh, you showed a graph there and I, sh I showed a graph and you showed some more, which show those very long cycles in the hundreds of millions of years. Yes. Now, in terms yeah. of those, um, are we at a minimum of that or have we passed the minimum of that? Uh, have you got any thoughts on that? Uh, I found that uh, many, many cycles are, are follows the gravitational attraction of the galactic center of our galaxy with our solar system. And the beat uh, between, between uh, planets and the galactic uh, direction uh, was, um, manages this, uh, this uh, solar activity. We found yeah. that uh, in, the, in the magnetic field uh, on the sun, there are two, two principal components. And one of them is uh, managed, managed by uh, galactic, galaxy, uh, the whole mm -hmm. other, uh, attraction of galaxy and uh, the planet nine, which makes yeah. uh, like uh, uh, oriented, uh, oriented um, 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 direction or, or axis for mm -hmm. for uh, uh, any other planets like uh, Jupiter and uh, other giant planets, which um, the the angle between between uh, giant planets and the galactic center um, is the basis uh, basis um, angle for for solar activity. So yeah. it means that um, not only um, um, Planet in, inside the, the solar system, but uh, the gravity field uh, from outside manages the solar activity. Yeah.
can I ask you about uh, Planet Nine? Because old ones of us will remember Jupiter, uh, will remember Pluto as Planet Nine, then it got demoted. So Planet Nine now means some other body far beyond the solar system, well then, you know, in the, the outer limits. Um, what evidence is there for this and what period, uh, did you say 18,000 years orbit? Yes, uh, but again, and Brown, uh, they um, analyzed this um, gravity attraction uh, from this planet nine to to um, asteroids behind behind the Pluto, like yeah. Sedna UB uh, 313, and yeah. uh, they uh, found that uh, these asteroids uh, or uh, large uh, large uh, yes asteroids are uh, are um, um, harmonized by by this planet nine, and uh, they uh, they are going through the periher perihelium in the same time. Ah, oh, okay. And yep. they found that uh, this is due to synchronicity. This synchronicity is due to planet nine, which uh, which must have the uh, the um, mass of uh, uh, approximately five up to ten ten times larger than uh, or bigger than uh, Earth. According to our analysis of the uh, solar activity, uh, the planet nine uh, has uh, the mass of only uh, between one and uh, 2.5 uh, mass of the Earth. It, it is uh, yep. approximately three, four, five times uh, less than for Vatican Brown. They published it uh, in, uh, in 2016. And uh, the period and the distance of, from the sun, uh, we, record, we um, estimated the same, approximately the same. Our, yep. uh, our um, orbital period of, uh, of the planet nine is uh, approximately 17,850 uh, 50 years long. And the uh, big, big uh, semi axis is uh, approximately uh, 600 uh, astronomical, astronomical units. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have some more comments on that, but I have to do some calculations first, so it'll be another day. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, well, we do have, uh, I have seen one video of Pavel's that we had before. Uh, which is um, fairly similar, I think, to what you talked about today. Um, but you've got some other publications, haven't you? Uh, which, which, was, which video it was? Well, I saw a video where you were talking about the same subject matter as today. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, have, you, um, have you got some publications that you maybe you can give us some links to... Uh, um, you've done some published material or your website or anything like that. Um, you can put it in the uh, chat area over on the right if you've got that. If the chat area is not showing, press the green uh, button. It was uh, at the oh, yeah. Alatra TV. Uh, I made the um, one interview with uh, Alatra TV two years ago, and yeah. they translated into the English too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And many of my papers are uh, directly on ResearchGate, uh, my my web page, my web pages. There yeah. are open open papers. Okay. Attempt to do everybody. I guess if people do a search using your name, they'll find some of them. Yeah. Uh, what is the uh, period of uh, revolution of the planet nine, and uh, how how distance from the Earth? Uh, I, I uh, uh, said again, uh, the according to our uh, our result, uh, the orbital period is uh, approximately seven thousand seventeen thousand uh, eight hundred fifty years, and uh, yeah. and uh, and the uh, distance from the sun is uh, uh, a bit uh, below seven hundred uh, astronomical units. And how, how eccentric would its orbit be? Uh, so does it ever come very near to the uh, in the planet, to the other planets? Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't. Uh... Uh, well, um, he wants to know how close to the Earth it comes. Uh, so, um, has it got a very a very eccentric orbit or roughly circular? What? 
Yes, uh, this planet has uh, bigger eccentricity than than uh, uh, Neptune or Pluto, but uh, not so much uh, like uh, uh, these large asteroids behind Pluto. No. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So that the answer to the, to Stephen's question is um, how close we'll come to Earth. It'll still be hundreds of astronomical units away at its what? closest. Uh, he wants to know how close it comes to Earth. It won't. It won't come within a few hundred astronomical units of Earth, will it? Uh, now it is. This planet is about approximately 800 uh, astronomical units uh, from the Earth. Yeah. Uh, I, according to my opinion, uh, this planet is not visible directly because uh, it is comparable with the Earth, and um, of uh, optical magnitude will be um, 20 plus 22 or 23. Yeah. And, you know, it is behind the uh, common common telescopes. Sure. Okay, well, Pavel. Yeah, so it's it's very nice to have you join us. Uh, Pavel is uh, the only one of our speakers today who wasn't already uh, well known to us at the Cycles Research Institute. So uh, it's very nice to have you join us and we'll hope that we'll see a lot more of you in your future um, and look forward to um, um, sharing things with you. Um, and uh, it's very good. Thanks, Pavel. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.